What's up and welcome to Cloudy's Top 10. I thought I would kick off my Top 10 series by talking about a game that, I don't know if you guys have realized, I kind of like, Undertale. Now, there's a lot of stuff to cover with Undertale, but I decided to kick it off with the Top 10 Saddest Deaths. Now, this is a very obvious spoiler warning, but spoiler warning, cause, duh, talking about death. Number 10. Any of the dogs. Now, I know this is kind of a cop-out, but I have to include them all because they're all equally sad. And what makes them sad, to me, is one, they're dogs, and who fucking likes killing dogs? It's messed up, man. And also, the fact that they make this noise when you hit them. Hold on, just this. Like, how fucking sad is that? Like, my god! It really wrenches my heart, and it just... It fucking hits me. It's sad. Moving on. Number 9. Muffet's Genocide Death. Now, in the genocide route, when you kill Muffet, it isn't particularly sad because you just killed Muffet. Yeah, it sucks, but she was kind of greedy and tried to feed you to her pet in the past fish route, so, like, fuck her. But what's really sad is kind of how it affects her people. And you really get this driven home by the little spider that usually puts up the sign of what attack's coming out next. Comes out, sees that she's gone, and comes out and just puts, like, a flower down? Like, fuck, that's sad! It really drove the point home that your actions do have consequences on this world, and it's really fucking sad. Number 8. Metaton Neo. Metaton's Genocide Death. Now, this is a huge topic I see around the Undertale fandom of whether or not this fight should have been an actual fight or a one-hit KO like it was. I belong in that latter group because I think this fight is done perfectly. Metaton knows that in any form, whether it be the Metaton robot box form, his normal like Metaton EX form, or this form, Metaton Neo, he knows that he's going to die. So he wants to die beautifully. And I think that it's not really the dialogue that makes us sad, it's that realization that he wanted to go out looking beautiful. And my god does he. His last lines aren't particularly sad, but he gets to die beautiful and as a star. Number 7. Asgore's Pacifist Death. This is the only entry from the Pacifist route that will be on this list, since in a Pacifist route, you don't kill anybody. But what I'm referring to is when you show Asgore mercy, and then Flowey comes up and kills him anyway. What's particularly sad about this is that Asgore wanted to die. He felt hopeless. But you give him this last little bit of hope by sparing him in this moment, and then he starts getting hope. And he's like, we could be a family, me and my wife will raise you the best we can. And then, at that moment, when this man finally found hope again, he dies. That is really fucking sad. Now the reason it got put so high up on the list is just because we didn't do it ourselves technically, so I felt that kind of lessened the impact of it. It was more of like a, oh my god, what just happened? Now I'm gonna go kill you, Flowey. So. Number six. Undying the Undying, her genocide death. So, if anyone knows me, you know that Undyne is my favorite character. And you'll know that the scene leading up to this fight is my favorite scene in the game. If I was to make a top 10 scenes in Undertale list, this would be number one. Her heroic effort to save Monster Kid and to save the world, both monsters and humans, from the destructive force that is you. It's so well done. It really shows that she is the true heroine. Now, in her death, she goes out like a badass. She takes her final hit, and then she gives you a speech about how she will not lose hope, how she will hold on, how this world will live on. Number 5. Toriel's Genocide Death. Now, two things make this particularly sad. The first being, this is the first time you've one-shot a boss monster in this game. And the second being... Toriel loses her love for you in this moment. She realizes that you're a monster, and she kind of laughs about it like she didn't realize it was going to happen. And she knew she was protecting the monsters and not you by keeping you in the ruins. So to think about your mother figure losing her love for you in her final moments, what's the one thing that could be sadder than that? Number 4. Toriel's Neutral Death. What's sadder than your mom losing her love for you as you've stricken her down? 
your mom not losing her love for you in that moment. Is there anything more heartbreaking than thinking about killing your own mother and having her still love you as she's dying? And with her dying breaths telling you to be good, to not let Asgore win. This woman saved you, guided you, and wanted to protect you. And you still decided to strike her down to get home. And she understands and still loves you. Number three. Sans. Now, I don't need to specify what route this death is in because you can only fight Sans in the genocide route. Now, these top three were all very close, but the reason Sans got put at third is for two main reasons. One, the fucking fans. I hate hearing stuff like, oh, Sans didn't die after that fight. You didn't kill Sans. He's too powerful. Blah, blah, blah. It's annoying, and it ruins this moment he has. Where in his final breath, all he really cares about is his brother. It shows you the love he had for Papyrus. What are his last lines? I'm going to Grillby's. Papyrus, do you want anything? And then you hear the dust sound. To me, him not dying in that moment ruins that moment. And the second thing that ruins this death for me a little bit is the fight leading up to it. Because my god, by the time you actually kill this fucker... There's a small part of you that's happy. You're so glad you actually did it that you can't feel bad for him. Which is awful! And the whole point of the fucking ending of this game! It really shows what you have to become to defeat Sans. But in that, it kind of takes away from his death a little bit, which is why this was at number three. Number two. Papyrus, the genocide route. Now, I personally hate Papyrus' neutral route death. His quote being, Alas, poor Papyrus, well at least I still have my head. This is all about him, and it kind of just seems a little out of character. But the genocide route is a much different story. Now, up to this point, Papyrus has been trying to get you to play along with his puzzles and try to have fun with you, even though you've done some really shady shit. And when you come up to fight him, he calls you out on this, saying how you look so off with all the dust on you and all that kind of stuff. But he still wants to be your friend, he still wants to help you, and to guide you away from the path you're on. You would think, like Toriel, Papyrus would demean you after you hit him, calling you a monster, saying, how could you do that? I was just trying to be your friend, or something like that. But no, he says, well, that's not what I expected. But still, I believe in you. You can do a little better, even if you don't think so. I promise. After everything you've done, including killing him, he still believes in you. And if that doesn't hit you at your very core, you're probably soulless. Now, this was going to be number one until I played a certain part of the game in the neutral route. And that brings me to number one. Number one. Undyne, the neutral route.
I'm not going to make a habit of doing that, letting a clip play out like that with no commentary, but honestly, that scene speaks for itself. Undyne is trying to tap into that power she harnesses in the genocide route, but her heart isn't in that pure place. She's looking to harm instead of protect, so she's unable to. And without that purity and focus, her body simply cannot handle her determination. And like the experiments in Elfie's true lab, she ends up melting away, screaming out, I won't die. I won't die. The lamented version of her genocide theme, Battle Against a True Hero, theme plays over the top as she begins to attack you with reckless abandon that's not even seen in the genocide route. But slowly but surely, her attacks slow up as the dialogue starts to tell you how she's smiling like nothing is wrong, how her body is starting to waver, and then it just simply says, Undyne's body, and eventually just dots. A lot of characters in Undertale accept their death, but Undyne simply can't. She attempts to crawl back from the brink of death, and fails. And that's why it's my number one for the saddest deaths in Undertale. Well, that was fucking somber. Thanks for checking out my very first top 10. If there's a top 10 you want me to make, comment down below and I'll check it out and see if it's something I'm interested in. Liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, all that stuff obviously helps, but I'm not gonna ask you guys to do that. If you want to, great. If you don't, that's also fine. I'm just glad you're here watching my video. So thank you for watching.